of Genesis. Genesis chapter 49, from 12 to 4. Genesis chapter 49, verse 1, verse 1 to 4. Verse 1 says, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall be for you in our state. Verse 2. Gather yourselves together, and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and every not to tell your father. You will end now at my first form, my mind, and the fear of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Verse 4. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because Thou wentest up to the Then dividest thou in. He went up to my couch. I jumped from there to the Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 33. 33 verse 6, the book of Deuteronomy. 33 verse 6 says, Let me bend thee and not die, and let not his men be filled. Today, I'm sharing with us on what I titled. How to fix mistakes in destiny related matters. How to correct mistakes in destiny related matters. How to fix mistakes in destiny related matters. What is mistake? Mistake is an action or an opinion that is not correct. Mistake is an action or an opinion that is not correct. It could be that it produced a result that you did not want. That is the definition of mistake. Other definition. Mistake is something that is not said, that is not done, or that is not written down correctly. Something that is said, done, or written down incorrectly. That is what we call mistake. Mistake is also something that happened by accident. Your intention is different, but what you got from it was different. It means that the action is a mistake. Mistake means the action or what you think that is going on. And you are doing something, but it became something back to something else. That's the mistake. The action or the thought that it should be this, but it turned out to be something else. That is what we call mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, only God is above mistakes. There are minor mistakes and there are mistakes that are fatal. In that picture that we read, Reuben, the first child of Jacob, made a mistake. He slept with his father's wife and his father was aware of it. Then on a particular day, Jacob, the father, gathered all his sons and he had to address them before he died. And he said, Reuben, this is what you did, that you start with my wife. Though you are the first child, but you will not excel. Oh, when you made eggs, he couldn't do anything. But we can knew that it was a mistake. What he did was that he and his family, they switched over to serve under the man of God Moses. They served Moses faithfully, until a certain time when Moses looked at the family and called them one that said, Reuben, <laughs> Reuben, I know what happened to you. You have been under the cause for today. The cause is evil. You will no longer be few. You will not remain small. And that was how the cause was taken away. He corrected his mistake by serving under high authority. He hear me today. When mistakes are made that are related to your destiny, this is how to fix such mistakes. The first thing to do is to have what I call absolute.
So do repentance. Oh, you regret your wrong doing. I shouldn't have done this. You repent with this kind of, you know, after repentance. And you think you will not go back to it again. Then you begin to serve under an higher anointing. You serve faithfully under higher grace. Faithfully until a certain time when that grace will change the course that is your life. Then Moses prayed for you men, and that was all. That was all. But Esau was unfortunate. He saw made a mistake. He ate the food that is properly prepared in exchange of his fat life. And he lost his fat life. The Bible makes us to understand that though Esau sought the fat life, he didn't with tears, he couldn't recover it. There are some fantastic in life. Please don't delay. Some mistakes are minor. Why some are major? Ah, mistakes that will cost you your destiny, that will cost you your life, that will make you to lose your own. You will not tell you the name of Jesus. And for adventure, you have made mistakes before. I stand in the name of the Lord. I speak that by the mercies of God, the Lord will have mercy on you. In the name of Jesus. Number one, you identify the mistake directly. You acknowledge it. What is the mistake? Oh, anybody can make mistake at any time. You identify what is that mistake. You acknowledge it. This mistake, how did it happen? Because if you don't do that, you will still repeat this mistake. That, that mistake. That's the best thing to do. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12, when we look at verse 13, Nathan was sent by God to David to convict David of his wrong for his dead other man's wife and the woman got pregnant. And the woman delivered a baby. And David did not seem to get Buddha, but God was aware of him. So God sent a prophet to him, and when the prophet convicted him, he said, I have sinned. He acknowledged his sin. There are people when they commit sin or make mistakes, they will be able to see nothing upon. The Bible says that whosoever covereth his sin shall not prosper. And the Bible says that if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. When there are mistakes, you could have offended somebody. You could have injured somebody. Somebody might be crying secretly because of what you did. Somebody might be weeping in the corner of this or our room because of your own doing. The first thing to do is to identify, acknowledge. Then we move to number two. How to fix mistakes? Number two, take responsibility. Don't blame shit when there is a mistake. Let the people know that it is your responsibility. You take the blame and responsibility. Understand how and why the mistake was made. Now, don't let mistake become your habit. Don't let it become your lifestyle. There are people when they are found doing something wrong, they will keep on doing it. I would can be and tell you and say, that is no longer a mistake, it has become lifestyle. You are found taking beer, you are found sleeping with women. And you say, I'm sorry. But later, you repeated it. That is no longer a mistake, that's a habit. You need to repent, you need to change. Because the coming of the Lord is near. And at the same time, you are doing yourself something that is bad, that is against your destiny. Number three, apologize. You apologize. When you are convicted of a wrong doing, you apologize to the person that you have offended. The book of James chapter 5 verse 16, it says confess your faults one to another. Apologize. 
if you have offended your husband, go to your husband. My husband, I am sorry. Say, I am sorry. I will not repeat it. Apologize. If you have offended your wife, go to your wife or give her a call. Darling, I am sorry. And you need to say it in such a way that the person will know that you are serious today. Not that you tell the person you are sorry today and tomorrow you repeat that you know. That's a nice time. It is very wrong. And when you tell the person that you are sorry, let the person know that no, it is from the bottom of my heart. Even your action will show that you are serious today. Apologize when something goes wrong. All you make a mistake. Tell the person, please pardon me, it is not intentional. Number four, offer a practical way to make up for the mistake. Yes, to decide on the course of action and do it. You have made that mistake right. Now, you need to redeem your image. How do you do that? Maybe by one is not the other, you couldn't prepare food for your husband or you are away from home. I mean, you, you couldn't attend to your life. Okay, when you now say I have a little you make up for the things that were done bad. Yes, oh, you will prepare both solid food that will make the man forget that you have abandoned him before. You will be so much available to your wife that your wife will know that, oh, my husband has come back home. Not that even when you are prioritized, you still continue that character. It is very wrong. There are people in church today that speak in tongues, but they run their lives in the principles of Satan. They pray, they sing, they do all of that, but the way they run their lives is in the principle of the other one. No. When you are prioritized, you make up for it. You let the person know that you need to have everything. But here in Africa, so men find it difficult to stand sorry to their wives. Instead, they will just bring up an issue and then they will start smiling, they start laughing. No, no, no. That's not what you need. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me show you something. In Africa, when a man offends his wife, or oh, his friend, he may not come to you and beg I'm sorry. But just come and start laughing jokes and the blame with you and asking you how his office, how his business, how his uh, that, 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 that. Oh, do you watch the ball yesterday? Oh, yes, yeah. When the man is telling you that he has apologized. Hello? So you are expecting to come and say, I'm sorry anymore. When the man starts cracking jokes with you and start telling you, he has apologized. But that is not the way it should be. He must back up his seat and say, Darling, I am sorry. Praise the Lord. But to an African man, it is too heavy for their mouth. To tell me what I'm sorry. As the president and chairman of this house, as the head of this family, and you need to bring down that ego. If you want to work with God, go to your wife, my Lord, please. I am very much sorry. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, <laughs> you know, God told Abraham. I'm giving you a covenant child. But before the covenant child came, you know, he made some mistakes and he just let me tell him his pain that they had a child called Ismail. And even after, when you know, the covenant wife died, he married another woman called Kitula and they have six children. Those children became problems in the house. And Abraham knew he had to make up for it. Isaac was aware that he's the covenant child. But what can the covenant child do when there are a sons of concubines and the son of the bondman around? One day, Abraham had seven of them. Genesis chapter 25, from verses 1 to 6, Abraham compensated all of their children and he sent them away to the east that they might not disturb the covenant child. He made up for it. He corrected his mistake. There are some people that stand up my voice. There is an extra mistake you need to correct. Correct that mistake before it is too late. Put a call across to that person and call him one. Please, I have offended you. Please, pardon me. I am sorry. Now, when you call a person and you tell him to forgive you, that doesn't mean that you are foolish or stupid. It means that you display maturity. 
It means that the divinity in you has overpowered humanity. If there is someone you need to tell today, I am sorry. Go to the person, give him a call. I say, Daddy, friend, please, I will know if it's there. And when you do so, you fix your destiny. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, <laughs> when people make mistakes, and they realize they make mistakes, some people will not want to acknowledge it. As a matter of fact, they will put up a face until they were convicted. Such was the case of a man called Judah, who slept with his daughter-in-law. And if he came back to say that ah, you are pregnant, then you have, <laughs> you have done something wrong. And the lady said, I have an evidence. The owner of all these items is the man I got pregnant for. And when he presented documents and the items, no and beyond, the items belong to the father-in-law who said that she must be crucified. Hear me today. When mistakes are made, please don't be a bold face. Come down. You tell your money, money, I have offended you. You invested so much in me, but I have paid you back in a bad way. You tell your dad, you tell your children, children, oh please, I am sorry I have offended you. So don't just bring it aside. It's something that we call you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can I hear you loud hallelujah? Now, these are the points to note. Number one, you need to undo your age long mistakes now that can prevent future blessing and God's day. There are some mistakes that were made in time past. You have forgotten it. But those mistakes, those errors, and those faults, they can prevent future blessing. They can prevent, you know, I and mean, stop the beginning of God for your life. You need to correct it now. Very, very important. There are some things that you probably may have done in times that people don't even really know you or you are living somewhere with things that is not normal. You need to correct the mistake. Moses in the land of Egypt went out one day and he saw two people fighting. Bible said that as he was trying to pacify them, he killed the man. And when he killed him, hey, this man is dead. Then he buried him, but it was a shadow grief. The day after, somebody said, Hey, the Prince Moses, you are welcome. Do you want to kill me the way you killed the man yesterday? Ah! So everybody is aware. If you think that nobody is aware of what you are doing, God is aware of it. Therefore, those mistakes and those errors, you need to go back and correct them. Number two, God is just. He is a just God. He is an impartial God. Well, the person you have offended may be somebody are crying. You, you, I mean, probably you have broken somebody's heart. And somebody is saying concerning you, this is the mistake of my life. What you need to do is to go to that person and apologize and say, please, please, please be here with me. Please be here with me. Because God is just. Hey, the tears of the innocent can speak against you and your future. Make sure you do the needful. Number three, what's well by a man's soul? He will read. That's what the Bible says. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, when there are habitual mistakes in your life, it will affect your future, it will affect your destiny, it will affect your children. Maybe you have done something in time past against some other people, families and friends and whoever, and you think that it means nothing. No, it will, it will come back, it will come back, it will come back in force. That's number three. Number four, be humble enough to correct yourself. Be humble enough. It will mean you have to rise up and go to the person that is offended. Oh, it's a mistake. Okay? So the money should be 10,000 naira, but I gave you seven. Now I realize that it will be 3,000 naira. Okay? Here is remaining 3,000. Please forgive me. Not that you go there with a, 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 a is that enough for you to just be, you don't believe that. No! So you will restore what is lost. You will restore what is taken. That is how to carry it out. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. I cannot hear you. Yeah. Number five, 
Having done the needful, turn a new leaf and move on. When you make a mistake, turn a new leaf, that is, you redeem your image and move on. Don't just sit down there and begin to think about past mistakes. Oh, it is the mistake of my first marriage. It is the mistake of my second marriage. It is the mistake of believing in this sister or this man. No! When you have done the need to forget it and move on, because you have only one life to live, and you don't let a mistake that God has cleared you of disturb your future. When God has forgiven you, and the person that your friend has forgiven you, then you forgive yourself and move on. Somebody shout hallelujah. Number six, don't allow a person keep repeating the same mistake that will jeopardize your destiny. There are people that will keep doing things that can bring you down. This ties yourself from such people. Mistakes that can hinder your business, your future, your opportunity. And you have such a man, you doing it every day to hinder you. Please cut off that connection, cut off that relationship because you are going somewhere and only one relationship can bring you down. Don't allow people who have habitual mistakes of fellow brothers for you. You must know how to handle them. You must devise a way to handle such. Don't allow mistakes to become a lifestyle. Number seven, the last one. Abstain from deliberate errors. There are things you want to do as a result of what your husband has done to you. That is not the way to go about it. No. No, 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 no. Oh, two hours can never make a lie. Oh, the person has offended you, right? Say, okay, I know what to do. You want to, oh, no, 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 you don't want you to pay him back with his coins. So let him realize that he has done something wrong. Let him come back and say sorry to you. Not that well, if it is one right now, then we say sorry to each other when that comes. It's not supposed to be like that. You are a child of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So you need to understand that when mistakes are made, it can be corrected. But you need to correct your mistakes before it is too late. Do the need for today. Correct those mistakes. Mind the broken world. And you will see God moving your life afresh in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray, oh God, as your people will begin to take steps towards correcting every mistake. Let your spirit guide them and let them receive favor. And there are people that understand of my voice. If you need healing, receive it now. If you need deliverance, receive the deliverance. If you need the joy of the Lord, receive it now. May the Lord restore you. You will begin to walk in the light of the Lord, in the land of the living. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name.